The next speaker has, was here at the very beginning. It's a very good place to start. She was in Oxford, although she's out of town in an Italian passport and lives in Paris. She's my Porsche Continental pal that I tell people about. She's <laughs> never looked good in the basket in the line um, But she was living in Oxford when we were about to launch the SSP and um, <coughs> Virginia. And uh, she came up and she was completely, before she even got here, convinced that we should do it and that we should be, um, that it was a fantastic idea and that the party was going to make a big impact looking at it from a distance. <coughs> and she'd been involved in Argentina in the mass and in the uh, mass struggles against the military dictatorship then. And since then she moved to Paris, you know, visiting us very occasionally from Oxford. And, uh, for about five or six years, campaign tyrants to <coughs> launch a party in France along the model of the SSP, the democracy, the broad popular um, uh, pluralism that we have, and the, the type of socialist program that we have as well. And um, in, in the last few years, they've launched a new party, the new anti capitalist party in France. They've brought the left together under a banner and Virginia has played a really important role in that. She is a member of the political committee, and she's got that many committees I'd ask her. She's a member of the National Political Committee. She's also a member of the International Committee. And she gets to come to our conference, and she gets to come to our meetings. And um, we hope to continue those links, but it's, it, it's exciting for us when the SSP was, was going through a little bit of a difficult period, but elsewhere in Europe, the model that the SSP represents, and the new type of grassroots democratic party that the SSP was being taken over by other socialists and they were engaging in that way and I think that's an enormous plus for those who believe in democratic grassroots socialist organisation and pluralism and it's great for the past. Virginia Dillis. Well, I, I, uh, I was still in uh, Francis, and I'm going to claim for uh, a position as uh, honorary member of the SSP because I've been coming. I've been the foundation. Um, and uh, I'm very happy to be here. Um, there is one thing, uh, there's one thing which I'm going to take from uh, Eric, which is the fact that we are right now in the one of the deepest crises of humanity. It's not simply a crisis of the system, of the capital system, it's a crisis at the ecological level. It's a, it's a terrible crisis, it, which means that either we change or we are in deep shit. That's <laughs> to put it in a national. Now, we are, we are having, um, we are having uh, capitalism trying to make people, trying to make the working class all over the world pay for all these problems, for all these for all these financial problems, and it's going to, it wants to make the working class all over the world pay for its failure. And everywhere in the world, we are seeing people resisting. We still have not reached the moment in which the working class is ready to attack. For example, in France, for the last five or seven years, there have been millions of people in the street. And yet, the government, the right-wing government, has passed all the measures, has changed, uh, has changed completely the retirement laws, has changed the, uh, the system for the workers, for the private workers, and is trying now to attack the uh, statute of um, uh, state workers. Now, what, when we started thinking about that, we said, what is the problem? The problem is that there wasn't uh, the working class does not have a political issue to the situation. And until they see clearly, they understand clearly that the way out is to do away with capitalism and to change it for socialism, for a different system, things are not going to change. This is not going to happen overnight. So when we started thinking about that, we said, never in the history of humanity the working class has needed so much a political tool and that political tool can only be a political party which is ready to fight for socialism. Maybe you don't have this problem here in Scotland, but in France and in other, in other uh, countries in Europe and in Latin America, the idea that the only political tool is a party 
is something which is very difficult to make people understand. So that was the first thing. We were, we were sure that what we needed was a party, a party of a special kind, a party that could bring together people who were ready to fight against capitalism, even if they were not quite convinced that what was needed was socialism. But they knew that unless we did away with capitalism, there was no way out of the situation. And we saw that all over the world there were different ways of approaching the situation. For example, in Brazil, there were the people from the uh, party of um, socialism and freedom. And because of the characteristics of the country, what they had done was to put together different political, different political currents, different fractions which existed in the, uh, in the um, workers' party, Lula's party, and which broke away when Lula became president and started doing all the things that Lula did. And we said, well, that might be a possibility, but what we found was that in France, there were no other political currents that were ready to work together with us and to come together under one, polit one political front of uh, an anti-capitalist front of the United States. So we had already in the back of our minds the way in which this SSP had been, uh, had been founded. And we said, it took us five years. We were uh, the smallest tendency in uh, what was the LCR. We represented 4% of the party in the, in, in the first Congress where we submitted the motion of starting working uh, to create a party like the SSP. Uh, we never became more than 5%, but we managed to convince the majority that this was the type of party that we needed and that we wanted. And last year, well, today, <coughs> today the NPA is one year old. Today is the birthday of the NPA. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm not going to say that this was easy. It was very difficult. We had to get together people who had never had any political activity in their lives. Never. So the idea of, first we had to convince them that what we needed was a political party. Then we had to convince them that working in a political party and trying to work for the revolution was not just talking. It was talking also, but you had to elaborate, you had to, you had to leaflet, you had to write leaflets, you had to distribute those leaflets, to get, you had to, uh, to make posters and to do well, all, the, all the work that you know, goes into making a political party and making a campaign. And together with that, we had people coming from different, completely different uh, horizons. I mean, people who had been in the Communist Party, people who had been uh, trade union leaders, people who had been uh, members of the associations, like, for example, the people who fight uh, for the, uh, for the uh, rights of uh, immigrant workers. So it's really... It, it was really difficult to make all those people come together. Uh, it has been really difficult to work all together for a whole year. And we are all looking forward to our Congress, which is going to be the first Congress of the NPA, which is going to be uh, mid-November of this year. Um, we don't know. We, there are many things which will have to be discussed. Uh, it's proved to be a really, 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 really difficult task, but we think that we are uh, coming along, and uh, well, this is what we're doing, and I hope we will go on in contact so that we can share our uh, experiences.